I was like, you know it's going to happen. Welcome to the desk of Lady Ada. Hey, everybody. It's me, Lady Ada, and I've got with me this slightly annoyed cat, Mosfet, the cat uh, mascot of Adafruit, and uh, overall fuzzy being. And we're back at my desk. This is my the, desk. The rumors of his demise. No. Not true. People keep saying, like, oh, does this Mosfet still alive? Is he dead? Well, first off, would a dead cat be squirming this much? No. Yeah, if you look in the box, you never know. But he's out of the box. He's out of the box. So now we know. Okay, well, he's gone. Uh, he, he came up here of his own volition, but now he's changed his mind, which means it's time to get to it's some engineering. So that's what we're doing. Uh, the weather has gotten chillier. The days have gotten darker. And that means we're spending more time indoors designing cool hardware. Yeah, and uh, this is kind of a, a special request thing that we wanted to do. The ESP32 is on its way. We had some modules. We have a feather that we're working on. Uh, lots of people are working on it us included, and uh, we've got some fun progress to share and more. Lady Ada, take it away. Sure. Okay, well last we checked in, um, I had designed some boards, I designed a breakup board and a feather, and what happened is I used the design I created a couple months ago was for the ESP3212, uh, uh, I think was the name, which is an Ixing, I think, or module and um, they're the ones that make the most the, the, the highest number of, of modules come from them and they make the ESP8266 module so I thought maybe I'll try out their 32 module but then like there were just weird issues and like they changed their mind then design changed so I had to kind of start over a little bit but then um, a couple of weeks ago we got some really great um, dev boards with a tinned module and we also got some modules themselves some like bare modules from Espressive, which is awesome because I was it was perfect timing for me to be like, okay, let's redesign this board and make a feather. So I thought, let's go to the overhead and I could chat a little bit about what what I did and why. Overhead, how I've missed you so. I know we're back to the overhead. So for those who aren't aware, um, for the last year, a little bit more than a year, it's actually since last maker, wait about about a year, I've been designing feathers, and these are boards that are kind of all the same shape and size. They're two inches by 0.9 inches. And they all have a USB connector, um, four mounting holes. They're, they're, some of them are a little bit longer, but for the, they're mostly the same size. They have a microcontroller and sometimes they have a little Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in this case device and built-in battery charging. And I have a whole range of them and all these dev boards, they have very similar pinouts. So I always put the power pins in the same location UART pins down here, SPI pins down here, I squared C pins down here, analog pins here, and digital IO pins up here. And I try to do my best to kind of make it as equal as possible between all of the different types of feathers. So this one is- We want to bring everyone together. That's right. So for example, <laughs> this is an M0 Bluetooth feather. It has a, at SAM D21, the M0 Arduino compatible processor plus Bluetooth. And this is a Feather 32U4 LoRa. So it has a LoRa module. So you can see it's like instead of having a Bluetooth module, you swap it out for a LoRa radio module. And this is a 32U4 chip. Some people like the 32U4, so we have uh, different kinds. And then um, here's one that's an M0 Wink. It has the Wink 1500 Wi-Fi module. But again, all of these are cross compatible. They all have uh, the same pins in the same location. And then our most uh, popular by far feather is the ESP feather. So again, uh, same shape, same overall design, battery charging, USB, LEDs in the same location. Um, this is a USB serial chip over here. And then that ESP8266 module. And um, the ESP8266 doesn't have that many pins, but I kind of did my best. You know, put the one analog pin over here, but the UR and the SPI and the I squared C and the GPI over here, I did sort of the best I could to get the pins as close as possible to all the other feathers. And by making most of the add-on boards, I squared C or an SPI or UART, I've had pretty good compatibility. So all these are the feather main boards and then these are the, um, some examples of feather wings. So for example, we have a, a doubler. So this just lets you plug in two at a time. 
We have an OLED. So this is a 128 by 32 OLED with three buttons. That's so kind of nice for display. Um, Ethernet. You know, you want to add a WizNet Ethernet chip. This is SPI. Works great. You get like activity and, and link LEDs. And I don't make a feather with Ethernet because it would be really big. You see, this wing is a little bit bigger than the um, Ethernet. Uh, sorry, the uh, the Wi-Fi or LoRa feathers. But if you wanted, you know, do a LoRa to Ethernet converter, like you know, you could stack this on top. And they're all stackable, and you get that. Uh, then last Friday we released the TFT. Feather wings, this adds a touch screen, 2.4 inch full color TFT, SD socket, and you know, you can just plug in your favorite feather over here, and uh, you know, you get a full color display, and then maybe it's a LoRa radio or a Bluetooth to touch screen control, whatever you want to do, you can go crazy. Um, data logging with a real time clock, another OLED here. How many feather wings did you make? I made, we made about 48, this is a GPS, so you have a little GPS module. So I, I kind of lucked out a little bit with the size. This is a precision RTC for people who want really good timekeeping. This is a precision RTC. And then um, this is a, a one that's coming up soon. It's not out yet. This is an MP3 feather wing. So this has a VS1053 and a little headphone output and an SD card slot. So you can have it play MP3 or WAV files or MIDI files, I think it can also do. Um, you can do servos, we have a motor driver, I mean really, kind of everything. Neopixels, here's a prototype of the Neopixel feathering. So we've got 48 different wings. And the idea is that, you know, they're, they're cross compatible. No matter what feather you choose, the wings all work. And the upshot of this, this discussion is that I now have an ESP32 feather. And uh, I'm still learning a little bit about this chip. There's, there's a couple peculiarities I wasn't prepared for um, or didn't wasn't completely aware. Some of the pins are, they're called GPIOs, but they're actually GPIs, they're input only. And the analog pins, there's no code for them yet. So I hope they work, but there's no real way for me to tell yet. Hopefully in a week or two, they'll release the API for that. And um, I actually didn't realize there's multiple UART. So I ended up swapping in my next revision, I, I changed some UART pins and some pins don't do pull-ups and I'm also learning about that. Um, but you know, it's a very new chip. Not, it's like alpha, beta, very new, but it's a good time to start developing. I didn't want it to start before, about last week, because so many changes were happening, I wouldn't want to release something and then have to re-release it with changes. I want to release it once, basically. Try to get it as close as possible to finished. So uh, there's some debug wires here. They're, they're obviously not gonna be on the final design. And uh, so we can start testing things out. And so what I like about starting with a feather version for this module is that I can pretty quickly test all of the capabilities of this chip because I can just plug in different you know feathers and that'll help me test each uh, uh, peripheral so for example uh, I've got here a quad hex well not hex it's alpha it's alpha numeric basically 14 segment uh, display and it uses I squared C. So what's nice about this is, would it be cheaper to bit bang it using all the pins? Yeah, it would be, but by using an I squared C converter chip down here, um, it lets me use this feather wing with any feather. So and if anyone's looking for ideas for shirts, one of the ones we didn't get to was like bit banger. So just go for yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So for example, you, know, you can stack these on top, but the nice thing about the doublers, I can probe pins if I want to. So, oh, Do you want to uh, answer questions real time or do you yeah, want to sure, hold? Okay. Yeah, why not? Okay, great. Uh, Let's do this thing. Sure. What's the clock speed on the SP32? I think we're running, I think it runs at 160 megahertz. But right now, according to the dropdown, it says 80 megahertz. It's unclear if what the 160 is, is 80 megahertz the SPI speed and 160 is the clock speed, but like it's either 80 or 160. All right, we got some uh, friends in the house here. So Phil M and Peace. Scott. Hey, Scott, peace. And uh, as uh, Phil M said, MicroPython will run on nicely. Won't it? We'll and work. wouldn't it be nice if we made sure all of our feathers yeah. work too? So this is kind of yeah. This is kind of uh, my plan. I mean, I didn't really know about MicroPython when I designed the Feather series, but what is nice is, you know, it's, it makes it a lot easier. I don't have to, you know, 
having MicroPython and the ESP8266 or the M0 or um, the ESP32, you know, if, I, if we do this right, if I do this right, we can have, you know, all 48 feather wings work cross-platform essentially around, you know, along all of the different devices and then you just have, you have so much more freedom to decide what chips that you want. Okay, um, if someone wanted to buy an ESP32 now, how would they do it? We have some of these dev kits. I don't know if they're in stock anymore, but we have had them, so sign up and we're getting more. So you can pick up a dev kit. They're restricted, we only want to sell one at a time because they're, again, they're very alpha, uh, beta, and uh, development is still is happening at a very rapid pace. And then um, this ESP32 Feather, hopefully I'll get it out in a, in a month or two. Uh, you know, all things go well with, um, and then we also have modules in stock, but you'll have to solder those by hand. Yeah, one thing I would say too is um, your investment in the Feather ecosystem um, will work out. So right now um, I'm working with Scott and Tony D and I'm taking the MicroPython stuff that uh, Scott's doing the firmware and I'm testing each wing and Tony's guides and more and then I'm adapting some of the code to some of the uh, easy to use hardware stuff that we're doing. So that's one of the things that I really like because we've talked to lots of educators and more and just anybody actually and they say well, all, you know, I want to buy accessories and a line of things that I know that I'll be able to use for a while. So there'll be things like Feather adapters for even other platforms because we have so many of them. And this is one of the things that we really wanted to do for a long time where if you have something that works, it can be an Arduino, it could be MicroPython, it could be something else. So I, I really like your strategy with this. Yeah, I was, uh, I was kind of inspired a little bit by the, the PMOD system that Microchip kind of came up with or worked on. And then Atmel did the Explain series. So the idea of having a main board and these plugs that it, it doesn't matter which <clears throat> chipset you're using. Because, you know, it used to be like everything was at Mega 328. Now it's, th there's a broad selection of chipsets that makers are using. The beginners still start out with the same stuff, but we're seeing more people start out with the ESP8266. I think a lot of people start with the ESP32 for the price. And you know the M0, which can use MicroPython, maybe that'll be a good route too. But the the sensors and pro and, and things that people want to use with it, having it be plug and play, guaranteed to work. You know, I can't guarantee that all 250 breakout boards we make work with every platform. Like, there's just so many cross compatibilities. We try really hard, but and you know as we as we revise old libraries, we try to make them forward um, compatible. But it's a, it's a trade-off, right, between speed, optimization, performance, and compatibility. So, yeah. you know, with the Feather series, I'm, I'm, I'm going for compatibility, but I, because I know what boards I'm going to be using it with, like, I don't have to worry about, like, the Energia TI fork of Arduino. I don't really have to worry about, like, PC Duino or whatever. I, I can just focus on the three or four platforms that I know are going to work. And again, having them plug and play very easy to test, it just makes it, it just makes it very easy to verify and make sure that these platforms are supported. Okay, shout out from Israel in the chat. And then also, okay. um, how, hey much, Israel. how much um, do you think you're gonna sell an ESP32 Feather for? Well, I don't wanna make promises, but it's gonna be somewhere in the $20 range. Okay, good. 20 to $25. All right, show some hardware. Okay, hi. Okay. We're here for the hardware. Okay, okay, so let's go to the hardware. Okay, so can we go to the um, compi? Okay, so I just wanted to show like these are all the the feather wings. So we've got I didn't even have at home the relay feather wings and then this you know really cool terminal breakout that breaks out all the pins and, and all this stuff. So basically, I want to make sure that all of these boards will still work. All these displays and, and segments and and OLEDs and stuff, especially the OLED feather wing because it's the most popular. Um, these are kind of sort of popularity. Proto wing, of course, will work with everything. OLED. Relay, I'm not worried about because it's just a relay. And then um, Ada Logger, that's a good one to test. And then, you know, GPS and I squared C. The GPS Featherwing actually didn't work on the ESP8266 because it was sharing a UART. So it's like the one thing it didn't work with. But um, when I redesigned this to use a, the secondary hardware of Serial, that should just happen and just work quite nicely. So um, I'm testing that quad hex. So I'm going to go to my, 
Yeah, this is the problem. I have too many libraries, and they're sorted in a weird way. Are I'm, these all the Adafruit libraries? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, so quad alpha num. Okay, so that's what I want. So this is an example, and, and what's really nice about starting with this is that it's a raw I squared C. There's no other GPIO. It just uses the wire library, so if wire works, it should just work. So I'm actually going to select these are all the boards. I'm going to select ESP32 dev module because the feather I made, I copied the ESP32 dev kit board. For the actual final feather, I'm going to change it around a little bit because I want to um, to make routing cleaner and because the ESP32 has a full pin matrix, you can have I squared C on any pins, and so I ended up kind of changing things around a little bit for the final design. But okay, so let's let's try this out. We're gonna uh, run it. Yes, yeah, so this is the flash frequency. So I think the clock frequency is double that. So if the flash is 80 megahertz, then probably it runs at 160. Um, we really like the Scilabs CP2104. Shout out to the CP2104 and 210X series. Great chipset, and you can flash your ESP board at 921 kilobaud. Great, never had a problem with the Scilabs chip. Other chips, not so much, but Scilabs, Super clean, great baud rate generation there. And then the serial port, and then let's try uploading it. So it's compiling, compiling, compiling. And you can see you have to, you have to install the ESP32 tool chain. So it's not a Cortex M0 or Cortex M3 chipset, it's a slightly different chipset. Okay, and then on the overhead you can see it's working. So it's, it's going through and, and it's just going through the entire alphabet. You know, we basically put in a font. So this is great. You know, what this means is about a quarter of the feather wings work off the top. All the, the you know, alphanumeric, seven segment, eight by 16 LED. So that's really great. You know, you, you know, you'd think like, well, I squared C is I squared C. But that's not always true. There's always, there's the, always the possibility that there's slight variations in the I squared C implementation. I've learned never to assume and always to triple check. So this chipset is golden. So let's remove, let's remove that. And what do you want to test next? You want to test the OLED? I'm not sure why not. NeoPixel is not going to work yet because NeoPixel has to be ported and I don't believe that's been done yet. Um, so we're going to skip that one and go to the OLED. Let me see if I have the chart. I don't think I have a Charlie wing. I have a lot of feather wings, but I don't think I've got one of those. I think I think I left those at work. Unless you want to grab them from downstairs. What do you want? The Charlie wing. Did I give you my Charlie wing? Oh, I think I had some downstairs, yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll check that later. Okay, All so right. next up, let's do the OLED. Okay, you keep talking. I'm going to go get them. Okay, I'm going to do the OLED feather wing. So the OLED feather wing uh, has three buttons and this um, 128 by 32 OLED. It is um, lovely and quite popular because it's a great slim little display. Um, so let's load up a demo program for that. So let's go to the, and I have a sketchbook with all my feather wing demos. Let's do the OLED feather wing test. And I've already set up the pin changes. So the pins are slightly different for the ESP32. Um, and just so you know, what I realized later is I think 34 and 33, you can't have pull-ups um, created. So I end up, this ends up not being as, as perfect as I'd like. But let's, uh, let's update it, upload it anyways and see how it goes. So everything's still the same. And let's send it on up. Uploading. All right, I got a bunch of things. Oh, yeah, I, just, I gave you all my. That's I was like, how many feather wings are missing? <laughs> so yeah. We can try a relay. Okay, so what ended up happening is the OLED does display, but it gets filled with all the um, letter A and C because it thinks that the letters A and C are being pressed. The reason for that is, again, I'm my code depends on the chip being able to set pull ups on those pins. 
So I don't have the pull-ups on the OLED itself, on the OLED board, instead I use the internal chip pull-ins, but those pins on the ESP32 can't act as pull-ups internally. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just comment out the code that prints, and then uh, let's upload again. I mean, we can zoom in a little bit, because, uh, can we zoom in on the um, overhead? I could try zooming in over here, too. You want to zoom in? Yeah, because I don't need that much space. These feathers are super teeny. All right. I'm getting there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, my upload failed. You, you want something like this, right? Yeah, that's great. Let me try uploading again. I'm also learning some, sometimes yeah. uploads fail because it isn't properly reset. Okay, so. Also, here's the thing. Nice. What, what's up? We're on Periscope and we got, you know, 45 people watching. Wow. Where's all the hearts? Come on, heart hearts. it up. Hearts, hearts up. Heart me. Heart it up, heart it up, heart it up, heart it up. Now they all laugh because they were embarrassed. No, no, because there's a delay. Oh, there you go, hearts. Hearts, 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 hearts. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. I'm my whistle, go to the lake. Get some hearts. Okay. So yeah, this is just a demo. It's not actually connecting to an SSID. This is just sort of a, a print test. Let me see if I can get that crisper. Yeah, it's nice and crisp. And then if I reset, you can see it has a little graphic. And then the B button works. When I press the B button, it kind of fills in the whole thing with Bs. But the A and C button again, those pull-ups, which is why this is why it's important to test all your hardware. Can you just add external pull-ups and have it work? I could, but the OLED Featherwing is like well into mass production and we've made um, a lot. So, you know, the fact that those, one of the things I was doing as I was designing this is learning, you know, what doesn't work. I'd actually rather change around the pins on the ESP32 Feather because it doesn't matter. Like nobody cares which pins are where on the GPIO pins up here. So what I did is when I revised it, I just shifted it around to the two pins that needed to have the internal pull-up capability were ones that could do it. Until maybe we figure out why I can't seem to turn them on. Because the data sheet seems to imply that all pins have internal pull-up capability. So it could be also something with the API, not necessarily hardware. But since I was rearranging stuff anyways, it turned out like it was quite simple to just make those two pins be ones that I could verify work with pull-ups. So, you know, like, is it the most elegant solution? No, I, you know, of course it would be better if I could redesign the OLED feather wing, but there's thousands and thousands of them in existence. I don't want to break backward compatibility when I can just tweak this design, which I'm tweaking anyways. All right, so that's the OLED. And then uh, you want to do the Charlie wing next? Yep. Okay, so let's do the Charlie wing. So another i squared c chip. This is a different chip, though, so it's still worth testing. And let's go to my feather wing demo. I don't think I have a... Charlie Wing demo here. I think I have to do go to the library example. The is thirty one F L thirty seven thirty seven. So let's do a graphics demo. And I'm just going to comment it so it's the wing. And then let's upload. See how that goes. Any other any other cues? Uh, I'm gonna put a discount code in because everyone's being really nice. Oh, thanks everybody. Yeah, yeah we want to do more of these, and uh, when you're nice, it helps. More hearts. Hearts, 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 hearts. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't reset when it has to upload. I'm gonna reset it again. I'm still, still learning. There's, there's a couple of weird things with Windows and the Scilabs chip and. The way that the ESP32 and the A266 do their resetting, it's a little bit weird. They do this like pin toggle. And uh, it's not that it's flaky, but it's like you kind of have to get it. Invalid head of packet. I'm trying to. I'm going to try forcing this. Yeah, very weird. You can do it. Yes, what's weird is that, of course, it was working great all uh, 
all day long with no all cameras day long on. Just with works no and works cameras. And works and well, you know what? This is part of like learning. You know, it's like I'm learning a lot of things. Like apparently putting capacitor on the reset line it's helps. Smooth, gotta smooth it out a little bit. You have to smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, there's a glitch sometimes, and so I can grab a capacitor and that see if that helps. Yeah. Why? Don't worry, ahead? Charlie Wing. Your bright days are ahead. Okay, hold on. Let me. While I'm here, reset to ground. That'd be sad if it never uploaded again. Okay, we'll try. We'll try again. Mistakes are what people eventually who are enlightened call experience. Well, this is you know what one of the things that you and I have to do is we we have to try everything to see what um, what happens. Yeah, why is this? Yeah, one of my favorite things is when we get a new firmware build from um, Scott, I I, uh, I just go in and try all my demos that I made, and I love when I find something kind of neat and weird, and then uh, and then I just get another firmware file sent to me. It's kind of nice. I'm gonna. But what it. what's neat is like if you look, um, mm -hmm. I think if you just search for like ESP32, you'll see a lot of like real time development. Um, oh yeah. Every day there's something new, and this that's not always true with a lot of things. Like we all kind of sit around and wait for the giant operating systems. This is very different. You get to, ha you get to have fun and participate early on. Yeah, that's I interesting. I totally can't upload anymore. No upload for you, Lady Ada. Let's try a... Uh... No, that seems to work. What if I... All right, I kind of forced it into download mode. See if that helps. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. Again, all all learning. Wing it. I don't know. Move to the next wing. We'll come back to that. No, one. no, no, no. Oh, I, I just, I just got it. committed. I just got it uploading. So there you go. Whoa. Yeah, Hello. it's a little bit too bright, huh? No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Camera's like, I don't like this. Yeah, it doesn't like it. You can see it's working. Yeah. It's uh, it's displaying. Okay, so yeah, it's saying hello. All right, so that wing works. So that's good. Uh, okay, so we did these three. We did the OLED. New Pixel I'm still working on. Okay, so then we wanted to maybe do, um, what do you want to do, Ethernet, or you want to do Data Logger? Um, you're the, you know, you're the dealer. Pick your poison, man. How about let's try the, um, let's try mixing it up. So we, we have done, well, now it's, where'd that yeah. thing go? Okay, so we did all the I2C, you did basically all the I2C devices, pretty much, all right? Uh, so now let's go into SPI land. So let's try a data logger wing. So the data logger wing has an I2C real-time clock, but adds an SD card uh, socket. So let's, I'm gonna grab an SD card. I have to have an SD card for it to do anything you wanna do. So I'm gonna grab this SD card from the MP3 feather wing, slot it in here, and then put that in there. Okay, so let's run, let's run our demo. I think I have a demo called Data logger for the wing demo. Okay. So yeah, I had to change this so the SD card, the chip select pin was on the right pin and the LED is in the right location. But other than that, it should pretty much just work. Let's try uploading it. See if it'll upload this time without any noodling. One of the things with yeah. micro Python that we're working on is when you edit a quote sketch. It's actually just Python. Yeah. And you hit save, it automatically saves it and it just runs it. It's kind of nice because you don't have to upload. Yeah, like, uploading, like as you can tell, is a little bit of a is a little bit of a game. Okay, so now you can see what's going on over here. So this is the Ada Logger wing output. So what's interesting is. Um, you do get all this output from the chip itself. So you can disable this with like pin 15, 
but it'll tell you stuff like what speed is the crystal running on and like you know basically the 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 pc like what what is the program counter at and what it's doing which is kind of neat so like this is your location that you're loading code into and um, okay so it prints out ada logger wing and then it initializes the sd card and actually succeeds so these are the two files on the sd card an mp3 file which i use for testing the mp3 feather wing and purple.bmp which is um a, a bitmap image that i use for testing the tft so the only thing is the time is wrong it's not 2008 do you want to try? We could try setting. <laughs> a lot of people woke up this week and figured out it wasn't 2008. Oh man! Damn cold. Whew. I think I just I think I took the coin cell out, so it's probably yeah. uh, wrong. Do you want to adjust the time? Yeah, um, I answered this uh, sort of, but uh, maybe you can answer too. What would yeah, be sure. what would be the holdup with getting an ESP2 feather? Is it the availability of the ESP32s? I said um, we're just waiting until we're ready, so all the stuff works. But yeah, a lot of it is you know you want to make sure that whatever you're designing is it, like software moves much faster than hardware and so making sure that um whatever hardware we design matches the software that's being created is kind of key because if you design hardware for an api that's still under development you can get bit really hard by changes in the api not that i think like there's going to be drastic changes but it's still good, like for example, you know, right now there's no analog digital converter API. It's not a big deal, but it just makes it like, well, I would prefer not to release hardware until that API is out so I can actually test the performance and make sure that all the analog pins work. There's no reason to think that they wouldn't, but it's just, it's just when something isn't firmed up, I like to wait on the hardware. I yeah. found that's worked out for me. I, uh, it's like you said, you know, a, a, a late game is only late once, yeah. but a bad game is bad forever. I'd rather ship good hardware late than bad hardware yeah, early. Yeah, at this point what we do is like, we kind of see what other people okay. now uh, it's the right time. launch with too. And like, we're like, oh, okay, like you made a mistake there. Like, oh, you did a good job with that. And then we can, we can launch and, and not be doing multiple revisions within the first few months. We can go with something that'll last a, a while. Yeah, but what is nice is having all these feathers makes it really easy to go through and you can see like all weekend I kind of went through and I just picked up each feather and as I did it, um, you know, I would discover, um, you know, bugs or not bugs, but like in the Arduino ID, which is still like way under development, like, oh, hey, you know, here's how to make I squared C do what it's supposed to. Here's how to implement the hardware serial, like all these little things that just need like mini tweaks. One question, do you yeah. play around with the Bluetooth on this thing yet? The Bluetooth right now, I actually haven't even tried the Wi-Fi. I'm still working on that hardware API. I sort of trust that. Of course, I'm not going to release it until I've, I've verified it. Um, I believe that the Arduino API, the Arduino IDE version of the API does not have Bluetooth support yet. I'm actually pretty excited for Bluetooth Classic support because I've been struggling so hard with the CSR chipset that if I can ditch that and move to the ESP32, I would really, really, really like that. That would like make my Bluetooth Classic products a lot better. Yeah. Not okay. to deal with CSR. Okay, so we've tested this, so that's good. So SPI is working. And we, we when we walk around and people say, "Oh, you're you know your Lady Ada," they're like, "Hi, hey, can you, what about CSR?" Like it's actually that like second sentence that comes. That out. is not true. What? You're saying that? No, pe that's happened. It has happened sometimes. Okay. That's true. Actually, it did happen that one time. <laughs> I guess you're right. I should never doubt you. Here, have your uh, data logger yeah. wing back. Um, CSR just they kind of they kind of own the Bluetooth Classic market. They're the ones who kind of design the chips that everybody uses. But the chips are under such severe NDAs that for us to develop code for them, we basically just had to sign away like every. Basically, we're completely unable to release anything ever. And it's a real shame because uh, I think we did some really cool stuff with the Bluetooth Classic chipset and the way it works. And so we have like you know, the easy link and the easy key line, but there it's just it's just a pain and, and it's hard to keep up. And um, you know we can't release firmware to people to do updates. So like if a new operating system comes out and something slightly different, 
there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Like, I'm, we can't I'm sure the developers and the engineers code. hate that there, and you know they watch our show, so maybe they'll hear this and they'll be like, okay, like we'll get that going. You know, they're making so much money. I don't think. Yeah, they but care. then it ends pretty fast. Like you know, we're moving away from the FTDI. That's going to happen really fast. We are. We are moving with FTDI. FTDI is, well, not that we ever spent that much money, but we are absolutely. Yeah. Moving away from FTDI, so. and it's it's not that. It's specifically because of driver shenanigans, but the driver shenanigans didn't help, if that makes sense. Like, given yeah. that I can get a, a chip that is equivalent or better for a third of the price, it makes it makes the decision tough. So I we d redesigned the Metro Mini, I'm gonna redesign the Metro, and redesigning the all the other stuff that we have that has used the FTDI chipsets. Anyways, enough about that. How about we, um, we because we're, we're running out of time, let's wrap it up with um, the TFT feather. Let's do it. Want to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the TFT feather, this is epic, and it's huge. And what's really cool about this is that it's got a lot of stuff going on. It's got an SPI TFT, SPI SD card, and an SPI touch screen. So this is, you know, we, t we tested I squared C through multiple chipsets, the real-time clock, the, um, Charlie wing display, the quad alphanumeric display. So now we're heading onto this. And then when we get the new version of the Feather, I'll, I'll, design, I'll test the, um, the GPS. Right now, the UART is the main UART are on these two pins, and uh, that'll cause problems. So I, I, I know not, no point in actually testing this. There's no, there's no way it's gonna work. So let's uh, extract this from here. Um, one thing that I'm kind of excited about completely yeah. I mean, it's all related, but not yeah. to this particular broadcast. Is uh, Jarek is doing some form stuff with us. Um, and we had him on the show and tell, and he has a crowd supply. Um, he got an e ink shield, his e ink display working with um, one of our feathers. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So I hope one day we will have a little e ink feather wing. That'd be cute. Can I get the SD card from the uh, analogger wing? There's a, just, just pop out huh? from the other side. Yeah, just press it in. Okay. Yeah, that's mine. My sacred SD card. Okay, so the SD card goes in here. And then so this is the display, but I'm going to leave it like this because I just get these dangly wires. And then let's run my Featherwing TFT full test. Are you ready for the full test? I think we are. So uh, I also set up the pins to be the correct pins for this breakout, and let's try uploading it. I'm gonna do this nonsense where I keep the GPA at zero low. I hope I figure out, I'm gonna do some data logging, or logic analyzer traces, figure out why that's happening. Okay. Close these old wings out. Okay, looks like I found the touch screen. Found the SD card failed. No. No, okay, failed? That's weird. Okay, so we got this. Let's try and if I hit reset. Alright, well. The SD card is not initializing, but I did get the uh, the touch screens working, so that's kind of promising. You know, I did do a lot of messing around with the SD. Oh, you know, I think, oh, you know what I did? Um, I have to jump or a pin. That's what I, I remember I had to do this because the pin that was on the chip select line and on the feather wing turned out to be one of those pins that's input only. So it was, this pin normally, and I think I set it to be this pin. So I just jumpered it. So let's see if that if that works. And the only thing about the SPI right now is nope, that's not it. Sixteen. Let me check my my hardware. One second. Can I remember? Yeah, one pin. I have to move it around. So normally it'd be 34, but yeah, 34 is input only, so I grabbed this pin. Okay. So let's 
privacy. So the only thing about SPI right now is that it's a little slow. Look at that. Yeah, it's much slower because from what I can tell, there's a real-time operating system running um, on the back of the Arduino ID API, and it requires a mutex lock whenever it does an SPI transaction. And so what happens is every byte right now takes 30 microseconds. So instead of being 32 megahertz, which is what it's supposed to be clocked at, it's essentially being clocked at 250 kilohertz. So it's quite slow, but it does work. You can always optimize it. I basically just took the SD library and just like set the defines up so it would work. But I haven't like truly optimized it so that the transactions that occur, occur in uh, large chunks. So that's the next step that needs to be done. Probably also, you, know, you have enough RAM on the um, ESP32, maybe buffer entire um, SD, card so um, SD card sectors all at once. But the fact that it works is promising, right? Because you, know, you can always optimize and make things faster later, but getting it working now, and you can see the touch screen also works, just means, okay, good, the hardware is working. Even if it's a little sluggish, we can always make it faster later. So good work, good, Lady Ada. That's a good end to now. So I have a spreadsheet of keeping track of all of the different feather wings, testing with the SP32, and of course, as I'm, as I'm testing each one, I'm learning things like, okay, that pin that I had on SD chip select was an input only. Okay, rearrange things around a little bit. And so when I started, I had, um, this was my design. This is the design that's on my desk right now. So, um, oh, can you go to the uh, copy? So SDA, SCL, 34, 32, 33. It turns out that these are all pins that can't do pull-ups so they're input only. And then 17, 16, 14, and then these are the hardware RX and TX. You can tell they're shared with that Scilabs chip. And then uh, the SPI, I, I sort of picked the default dev kit SPI pins. And this is a little bit longer than two inches. So another thing, I couldn't quite squeeze it in, but then I'm still like tweaking it, but this is the current design of the ESP. Like I, I'm sort of still routing this area over here. But what's nice is that I've taken out all those pins over here that couldn't do pull-ups. They're now replaced with 14 and 15. So these can do pull-ups. They'll make it work with the OLED. Um, I cleaned up this routing so you can rearrange which pins are I squared C. And so you, know, you can see that this is nice. These two parallel lines here, whereas in the old version, you know, there's this little roundaboutness. They cross over each other. So because you can pin mux whatever you want, you know, why not make it clean? You made it nice and clean. And then the RX and TX pins are now no longer shared with the Scilabs chip. Instead, they are on one of the secondary UARTs. So those two pins won't collide with upload and download. So when you do the debug serial, it's completely separate than your module or interface serial. So it'll make it work with cellular modules that use UART, GPS modules that use UART, and there's a, like fingerprint sensors that use UART. There's a couple devices that are UART, hardware UART only, so this will be really nice for that to work. And then yeah, we drained a couple of pins, and then what I really want to do is eventually get to test these DAC pins, DAC1, DAC2, and then um, these analog pins, because I've, I've pretty much tested all of these folks up here, right, through all of those wings. They, these are all the pins that usually are tested, so these are good, but I wanna test more of these. So, so far, so far, so good. And uh, one of the analog input only pins, I turned into the battery charge tester, so that's been added. The ESP8266 didn't have that, because there's no extra analog pins. On the 32, there's tons, so this is kind of, this is kind of, heading towards being a very nice feather and also managed to kind of squeeze it down to a perky two inches by 0.9 inches. What uh, question, what version of Eagle Cat do you like hanging out in? I'm in 6.4 because it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Yeah, one of the changes I made is, you know, I used um, over here I have individual resistors and some of these resistors ended up not being needed. So I changed them into a resistor pack. You can see this resistor pack up here, that saved me a ton of space. Because essentially I went from a 603 to a 402s, and I love these resistor packs, they, they're, they're really great. So all this has squeezed down quite a bit 
And then over here, I'm also replacing, there was a, a batch of um, four or five resistors, sorry, four, three or four resistors over here, also replacing those with a resistor pack. Okay. That's it. That's good lady Ada. 46 yep. minutes on the dot. Yep. All right. A little bit longer, but we're, cause we're getting into it. We're going to get we have some short ones, some long ones. Yeah. Sunday night was always a little long. Yeah. Maybe and we'll get back into Ham Sunday. I got the Laura modules. Yeah. You get some Laura ESP We're going to be broadcasting more than ever, folks. Crazy. Get ready. Well, we can't go outside. It's crazy out there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will build the future together. And uh, don't forget, the code is feathers. Um, it'll work until I turn it off, so order fast. And... Um, all of the feathers that we have in the store and all the feather wings will work with the ESP32. Yeah. I'm like, I'm super confident. Um, also, uh, why are you sticking on um, Arduino 1612? Or no, why, why are you using the older version of Arduino? Oh, it, I, I have a version of 1619, but this is the one, I'm using 169 because um, this is the one that I TT duino fied so I kind of use that. Yeah. I also have a copy of 1612. So maybe I'll show maybe I'll show some. Um, it's not out yet. Bonus feature. Really? Is everybody being nice though? Everybody's um, super nice. Everyone's super and the other nice. thing, let me just say this: um, YouTube recently updated their notifications. So we had like a couple hundred people in YouTube, a bunch of people on Twitch, a bunch of people on Facebook, and um, now we broadcast on Periscope because you can do RMTP, which is a way to pump all of this onto Periscope before it had to just be a phone. So we have a lot of lots of love this week. Okay. All right, so I'll show them the overhead. Yeah. So this is an adorable module, the SIM868. Okay, this is a quad 2G, it's 2G, but a lot of people are okay with 2G, plus GPS cellular module. Cellular plus GPS, look at how small it is. Wouldn't this make like a really great little feather wing? So you could have your ESP and then this would fit on top. So I don't have a proto feather wing, but like you could, you could imagine it. I can imagine a lot of things. Look at that. Wouldn't that be cute? That's cool. doesn't do as much as the phone at 800, but or the SIM 800, but you get GPS and cellular. And look at how small it is. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Cute. Very cute. Maybe I'll design that on a future Desk of Lady Ada. Yeah, we'll do that. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, making a very interesting week even more epic. Just remember... Um, what we do, what we share together, is what actually matters. So this is fun stuff. Get the word out. Save some money with Code Feathers. Um, teaching and sharing an open source. Well, it's sorry. where it's where it's at. So um, let's figure out ways to get more people to do all this stuff with us together. This is cool. Yeah. I mean, this looks like a mess, but it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. So yeah, we'll have that. We'll we'll send out prototypes to the ESP32 next week. Yeah couple weeks we'll get it back and we'll get a little test with all the feather wings and if they pass then it's into manufacture yeah wow i'll put a camera on that when we do that too when we, we manufacture that. the first esp 32s it's a big deal yep all right thanks everyone see you um on the internet later bye bye